Tommy, great to see you here at PPIM. It's good to be here. And great to see the, the folks listening. Yes. So um, tell me, what is it that Alan Edwards does? And what do you do for Alan Edwards? Well, I'm a senior sales executive, been here since 2014. And uh, we're primarily a, a pipeline repair company. We, we manufacture steel repair sleeves. We have two new products, is something that we're featuring here at the show this year. Uh, we have a composite, well, it's called Omega Wrap. And we have a carbon and an e-glass system. And then we have the new compression sleeve, uh, which is a heat induction compression sleeve to put pipelines in compression for crack-like features. So how long have y'all been coming to PPIM? Alan Edwards, uh, probably since I've been here, I, I, I had to count. Of course, COVID kind of threw me off. So that threw all of us. Yeah, that's for so I, I would think if I really calculated, this could be my maybe close to 15th year yeah. being a PPIM. Uh, and P, I don't even know how long PPM's been around. How long has I, Alan Edwards been around? Uh, 1947. We had our 75th birthday last year, so we're working on 76 this year. I don't very often meet a company older than me. Yeah. You know, to, to me, something's really unique, too. It's fourth generation running a company. Yeah, so closely Pretty unique. So interesting kind of sidebar. I did a podcast recently um, that kind of spoke directly to staffing challenges and closely held multi-generational family businesses. Because there's a lot of those in our industry. Yes. It, yes. It's, we, we develop this very unique expertise, right, that, that, that we have to retain and move forward. And it just, when a company specialized like Alan Edwards gets bought by a bigger company, that tends to kind of disappear. It does. It does. So, it does. anyways, yep. kind of a sidebar. Yep. Yep. So, um, I wanted to talk to you about your compression sleeve. You were walking me by your display yep. over here. It's yep. kind of interesting. Yep. And the compression sleeve... That looks like it's kind of a new concept in repair technology. Tell us a little bit about that and how it works. Yeah, te te technology's been around for, for some time. I, I think what makes ours unique, basically it's a, a repair half sole repair sleeve. Right, a typical type A or type B sleeve. What makes this one unique in itself and the technology part of it is basically we heat the sleeve uh, and we use induction heating to be able to heat that sleeve. With that heat, we get some growth. Right. Once that growth is achieved in the sleeve, we tack weld it. Once you get all your uh, heating equipment off of it, you can fully weld it out. And when it cools, it puts that pipe in compression. So if you have a crack-like feature, what you're trying to achieve is to keep and try to mitigate that crack from growing. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's uh, how long has that compression idea been around? Is that or is the way it's, no, the compression part's been around for a while. Uh, I think what makes ours pretty unique is that we use the heat induction. Is so it's, tell, it's, tell me about that. What is heat induction and how's that different? Yeah, well, the heat induction is just different than an open flame. Uh, and the heat induction here, what you want to do is you need that delta. You need the heat difference between the sleeve and the pipe. So you need a quick heat into the sleeve. You don't want that heat to penetrate down into the pipe. You yeah. do that, the pipe will expand with the sleeve. Right. So, 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 so the real the real trick of it is is getting that heat in there precisely, so you can keep that delta, the temper, temperature differences between the sleeve and the and the pipe, the carrier pipe. Yeah. That, that this 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 supports a notion. I always have everything's easy till you know enough about it. What, what what I really like about the heat induction to me the, the primary thing is is number one you get the heat precise, but you have a controllable and measurable heat process through the Right. Writing. And now all this takes place in a few minutes. It's not a very long drawn out. And we take cold gap measurements before we start. And then once we get the heating process done, we take hot, what we call all hot gap measurements. So we can make sure that we've achieved that growth and it's welded out. Interesting. So you're really, I mean, you're, you're actually engineering the compression. So you're getting the, uh, you're, yeah. you're targeting a specific amount of compression. So you get not too much, not too little. Well, if what's real unique too is, is that, that of course, people a lot smarter than I, uh, developed a calculator, uh, to be able to help take that pipe data, the flow, everything that's considered and it calculates. So, you know, precisely where you need to get it at. Yeah. That, that, you know, that kind of thing to me, Tommy, is it's really fascinating. Not being an integrity guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's real easy to look at some of these things and, yeah. you know, just look at it and you think you understand what the science behind it is. And then I have a conversation with somebody like yourself and I realize I don't know hardly anything <laughs> at all about this stuff. <laughs> so it's really, it's really awesome. Tell you another neat feature I, I also like about it is, uh, you know, you have pipe laminations. See, sometimes if you want to go in and you've yeah. got a, a pipe uh, that maybe you need to put a three foot sleeve on, 
you have to be able to have a good clean spot to land that well. Right. And then we have you know, some lamination and some pipes. So sometimes people are forced to put more sleeve on that's actually required for the for the corrosion area simply because they need to land those wells. The right. ideal behind this is is that you can come in, place that over your feature. You don't have to worry about the end wells and place it in there. So crack like features and some lamination seems to be a real good sweet spot for this. Interesting. So what what other kind of repair technology is well, have? Well, obviously we have the, the, the sleeves that's been around since, you know, forever. You're right. Our 75-year-old company. Uh, so type, typical type A, what we I refer to as tight-fitting sleeve, uh, been around a long time. So the, the, the newest things that we have when it comes to integrity is the composite. Well, we handle a product called Omega Wrap. Uh-huh. There is a, um, compo- uh, excuse me, an e-glass system, which is basically a fiberglass, and then a carbon uh, material. So those those are, uh, for, in that they're pretty common. They've been around for, composites now have been around for a very long time. Well, yeah. Very and it, well, and they're, that's a technology that's right. evolving very quickly. Absolutely. We're learning more and more every day about how to get strength into the composites by the materials we're using, the epoxies, the resins, how we're wrapping, how we're placing the fibers and all that type of thing. So I spent 14 years in the composite business before I came to Allen Edwards. So uh, it's really neat to see. And I was with the development of a company then, uh, a product then, and it is really fascinating to see that uh, the technology changes even in fabric. Right. And the epoxies are so much different than what they were that many years. Yeah. And it's amazing to me how much strength you can build up. And the other thing that's interesting is you can build up strength in one direction with almost no strength in another direction. That's correct. But very, very fascinating, those technologies. And then Omegraph's doing some specialized testing for wrinkle bands and uh, geohazard uh, situations, girth wells. So it's it's not just being limited. You know, we first started in this business a long time ago. Uh, it was basically small dents and, and, and uh, corrosion, you know. Right. But uh, that's another thing that's really transpired a whole lot in the industry is, is being able to go out and test different features. A company has a, a specific issue with their pipeline. They can come into a place test it, prove it on in the lab, mm-hmm. and then go out and, and attack those anomalies. Well, awesome. Well, listen, it's great to see you here. It's great to be at PPIM and see everybody else. Oh, good to be back. This is, honestly, this is my favorite show. Uh, I like it because we get, uh, you know, you get some, the high-end people in companies down to people that's making the decisions. And well, and it's it's kind of the, if this is where the pipeline integrity community is, it is. really it is. kind of worldwide, this is the place to be. And what I'm starting to realize is a lot of these faces I've been seeing for a long time. <laughs> that's really neat. Good back. You and me both, yes. Ali. You and me both. Man, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Talk thank to you. you.